Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'm here with Joe. How how are things going, Joe? I, I guess it's all right. How about with you? Well, I'm excited. Well, I'm not excited at all. Hey, I'm, it's Pride Month, yeah. and um, to celebrate Pride Month, we've got announcements of a new title, and I, I wanted to kind of throw this one by you. And it's it's to be clear, I, I think. Well, just spoilers. I think we're about to make fun of this article a lot, but it's very possible. Yeah, it's it's very possible, but it's it's. It's not for trying. So I, I, Iceman as a series, they've tried it before, right? How many solo series? We've got at least two solo series. We had one in like the 80s, right? Yeah, there was the miniseries in the 80s. Uh, oh. And then there was... There's one uh, in the 90s as well. Yeah, yeah there was something like that. But then, and, and then we had the two different ones from, from Saint of Grace. But, um, you know, and then we would occasionally have uh, books where Iceman was very prominent. Uh, he was really big in uh, Louis Simonson's uh, run on X Factor. And That's they right. did a lot of great stuff with him, a lot of great character work that they immediately forgot, uh, yeah. which was exciting for people who invested in, in that series. Um, oh, yeah, good. They, they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's back when he was doing everything he could to fight for uh, the love of his life. What and, was her uh, name? Right, God, what Opal. Was her name? It was Opal. Opal. Yeah, no, it was yeah, Opal. yeah, no, it's a, it's been a while since I read that that arc. It was really good stuff. I, it was, and, and didn't they have him like sleep with, uh, or or he was gonna screw Emma Frost, but then he didn't, or wasn't there some kind of thing going on there for a while as well? Yeah, they, they flirted with that, but the most inconsistent thing, I think, with Iceman has been his his power set. Um, depending on... He is constantly the one of the most powerful mutants ever and then depowered for no real reason. And not actually depowered, they just, like, forgot that they wrote yeah. him as, like, an Omega-level mutant, so he's just kind of, like, in the background, just doing stuff, and then they uh, someone else comes up with the idea of like, oh, you know what? He's actually the most powerful, and it just we just keep living through that hell. Didn't he during the uh, House of M when they depowered the mutants for a brief minute? They're like, oh, Iceman lost his powers because he showed up at the very end of House of M. And he was like just like in his underwear, sweaty or something. He's like, ah, oh, yeah. what happened, guys? I can't ice up. And then later they revealed that he was just being a pussy about it. Yeah, and then um, you had the stuff, and there was that kind of, one of the more interesting things, probably in Chuck Austin's run, uh, which we, we we should, you know, circle back with Chuck That's Austin. That's a retrospective in the making, yeah. Yeah, we really need to do that. But, um, like, there was that bit where Iceman's, like, organs, or, or like, he had, like, a hole in his chest, and he just, like, covered it up with, like, the ice, and they yep. were kind of implying that, like, Oh, maybe like um, he, like he's so powerful that he's like can live like he doesn't need a human body. Like they they were trying to like go there, and then they just kind of stop. Yeah, yeah. No, it it. I don't know. They they don't seem to uh, to know what to do with him. But what they are doing with him now, and here I will just read the article. Which again, it, it's like you're going to put out a new Iceman series, fine. But this is one of those uh, grabbing defeat from the jaws of victory kind of write-ups for a comic. Yes. First of all, by the way, why is Iceman drawn like he's six years old? I I have no idea. But um, w one thing here I think to keep in mind is that Luciano Vecchio, if I'm saying his name right, mm -hmm. uh, did already did a digital first... Iceman story this past December, which was like a New Year's story. Yeah. Where like he has to stop uh, like a, a rarely used villain that I think also showed up in Crystar. Yeah. If, if I'm right, like... Um, it was odd. Yeah, like this rarely used character who somehow was also written and acted unlike any other appearance he had ever been in before. And his motivations made no sense because what he was trying to do in this comic goes like against a, a lot of the stuff he would normally do. Um, but sure. he was like a fire guy or whatever. So, so I, I, you know, and I, didn't, guy. 
I have nothing against Luciano. Uh, I mean, I think the art's solid. It's just, yeah. uh, why are they drawing him? I mean, I when I first saw this, I thought this is a story from Iceman's past when he first joined the X-Men. Yeah. But no, he's just drawn like a child. I, I, okay, that's a choice. But anyway, so here's okay. the, the announcement. Marvel's longtime X-Men character Iceman is getting his own solo series, Marvel Voices Iceman number one on Marvel Unlimited. Why are they tagging on the Marvel Voices? Marvel Voices is an anthology series. This is not an anthology. What? what yeah, I, I, I don't like this. I, I don't like that. I, like, look, I, I understand what they're trying to do. Um, this is a hard thing to juggle. It's easy to kind of, be, you know, be the backseat driver here. Sure, sure. But. I, I understand being like, oh, well, let's try to create a in either like an imprint or, or, or like something with the trade dress to make it very clear that this is a, you know, comic for, you know, a, a, a certain group. But, but also the voices imprint is basically everyone but cis het white guys i think it's so non-cis non white guys imprint yeah so i'm not sure like because you could do marvel voices presents iceman but you could do marvel voices presents most of the x-men <laughs> I I don't understand uh, what's going on. Anyway, th so anyway, it goes on. Marvel yeah. announced that Robert Drake Iceman will star in a new four-part series from writer and artist Luciano Vecchio. The first issue of the series is available to read now on Marvel Unlimited and will continue to roll out weekly on the app. Yeah. The synopsis reads, Bobby Drake has had a big year. Has he? I don't think so. Um, this is the most people have talked about him in a, in a long time. After helping terraform the entire planet of Mars. I, okay. I mean, he is, did is do that. that. What happened? Yeah, I guess, but, like, but nobody, like, they didn't build a statue to Iceman anywhere. Yeah, he, he was one part of a lot of parts of, of terraforming Mars. And also, I mean, I don't know how, you, how you're thinking about this or people listening or whatever, but like, I still don't know why the fuck they terraform Mars or what they're doing. I I have no idea. There was uh, I, I don't know because they wanted a mutant planet. I, I who knows. Anyway, after yeah. helping terraform the entire planet of Mars, he's out to explore what his omega potential truly means. Hasn't this been the fucking plot of Iceman like at least a dozen times in the last twenty years? He's out to explore what his Omega potential truly means. Like literally they've done this a dozen times. Oh yeah, no, but um, also um, to, to clarify, yeah, it was another ice demon. That's right. It wasn't fire demon. It, it, Ichthalon, um, who who's shown up and, and fought such incredible characters like Chris star. Well, thank he's, God he uh, got to the bottom of that one, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, he's, um, he's vulnerable to fire. And all that that that's right that was uh what a what a weird he, he's a demon um he just yeah god this is just oh okay so yeah. after <laughs> after kicking off sorry kicking off marvel comics commemoration of pride month marvel voices iceman is a four-part series that celebrates life Love and all the beautiful complications in between. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, th this to me, like reading that, again, I'm not quite sure why you're doing I get that this is for Marvel's Infinite App. Um, so this so is you're, for you're going for a different. This is for subscribers who would not pay for this issue if it was by itself. Yeah. But the idea is, I think this is a misguided 
approach at, hey, you know, uh, that like uh, Wayne family webtoon is actually doing really well. We should we should do that kind of stuff. So we should do slice of lifey kind of comics with our characters on the app. And that does make some sense. Sure. I don't know if that's the best way to advertise this comic right now, because um, I, I would personally like it if there was any hints at all of there potentially being anything resembling a conflict. I mean, this this image that they have here. Who is this character, by the way? Is this Somnus? It looks like Somnus, but I don't. I don't know. Isn't Somnus dating Jackman? I mean, I oh. thought that was a. Um, they already lived a whole life in a dream that they were dating, and now it's like an awkward sort of like, will they get back together or not, kind of thing. I this this article is so bizarre. So anyway, they um we've got okay, so so basically during Pride Month, four issues, one a week of Iceman celebrating life, love, and all the beautiful complications in between life and love. And and then Pride Month ends and it's fuck off Iceman. Yeah. Okay. So, fair enough. Um and then they talk about you know, and I, I love these highlights of Iceman. Created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, Iceman first appeared in 1963's The X Men Number One. A founding member of the X Men, Iceman is a mutant with the power to create ice out of thin air by freezing the water vapor around him. He's been a member of X Factor, the Future Foundation, and other superhero teams. Iceman appeared in several of 20th Century Fox's live action X Men films where he was portrayed by the boys Sean Ashmore. That's a weird what I mean that's a weird encapsulation of his life I think. Yeah. Also, I don't know. I would have also maybe mentioned the defenders. Uh, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Future Foundation is that really that's really a big thing you want to go with? Yeah. That's I mean, a, I, I, it's a thing, a but Okay. And then I like this line of Iceman came out as gay in Marvel's all new X-Men in April, 2015, when Jean Grey learns of the revelation through her telekinetic abilities. I mean, that's one way to describe that scene. Yeah. And, that's certainly a thing that kind of happened that way. And then they, uh, then November 2015's uncanny X-Men 600 confirmed that the character was gay. Uh, which was then further explored in 2017 solo series written by Cena Grace. And then we talk about this uh, ice team and the story you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, after defeating the foe, Iceman shares a kiss, not with his boyfriend, Christian Frost, who was Emma Frost's brother, but with a version of himself he creates out of ice with his powers. What, what, why, again, why, why are you highlighting that? That doesn't, yeah, that's not like a, uh, thing you talk about I, I i don't i don't know anyway i so where i get to in all this is what what is the point <laughs> of of what is the what is the point of this i i there's lots of good lgbtq books that are indie books that are doing really amazing work i think yeah what is what's an what's some what's some good books that you would recommend for pride month Oh, geez. I, I mean, I, I always recommend people go back and read some of the classic stuff, um, like Stuck Rubber Baby from Howard Cruz. Um, you know, he passed before they uh, they released the reprint of that through First Second. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's an absolute must read, uh, I think, for just about everyone. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a really important book about um, it's like pseudo biographical and goes into, you know, like growing up in the closet in the sixties during the civil rights movement, the intersections with all that. Um, but I mean, even like, even like a few years ago, they just, they're putting out in trade the, uh, Steve Orlando Midnighter run, which was good. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, you know, there's, 
there, what, there are so many things books, on the Indian. Do these books celebrate life, love, and the messy or the beautiful relationships in between? Sorry, beautiful. I, I'm see, I'm messing it up because it's so stupid. <laughs> No, 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 you're, you're, you're fine. But, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, all, all that stuff, I think, um, you know, what was it like? Blue is the warmest color. Um, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, Fun Home is another one. I, I got to see that musical as well, but like, that's a great book. Uh, it's another one people should read. I mean, there's, there's a ton of, of really good stuff. And, and I mean, there's plenty of like good, like action kind of stuff that's, that also features a lot of queer characters. Uh, there's another Steve Orlando graphic novel earlier in his career. So, you know, maybe like six years ago or something like that. I forget exactly when it came out, but um, a Virgil at um, Image. It was like, a, you know, it was a gay um, sort of action revenge kind of graphic novel. That was, that was great. I, um, does this stuff, so I have my point of view on this and I, I often, I, I, you know, I don't know how people agree or whatever. It always seems like somewhat of a controversial opinion, but does this stuff actually celebrate pride month? Because the, the problem I have with it is that you blink and it's gone. <clears throat> so they do all this, this stuff. And then in July, it's like, eh, and gone. And, and I was doing this, this exercise, uh, with you before we started taping. Yeah. And it's basically this. There's there's lots of YouTube channels out there right now that are like the invasion of, of gays in comic. Everything is gay. How many solo ongoing titles can you name? And I'll even throw in limited series that feature a, from the big two, that feature a gay character. Combined, yeah. they do about 108, 160 books. Yeah, I mean, you're not even getting to 10%. Like I, I couldn't imagine. I can't imagine you getting to five percent. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to count them out. You got John Kent Superboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, then uh, if you you can count, you might be able to count Catwoman and um, and Harley Quinn. Uh, you can probably count. I guess Poison Ivy has a limited series or something with G Willow Wilson coming out soon. Okay, so we're but four. um. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, we're at four. But the, part of what makes this complicated is is the definitions and and all these things because, um, okay, yeah, you know, like um, there have been times where, for example, DC will kind of maybe imply that Wonder Woman is by, yeah. On this, on this same site that did this news announcement, there's a story about how Linda Carter uh, confirms Wonder Woman is an LGBTQ icon. Yeah. But I, I but again, and they, they, they said Star Lord is by Hercules is by uh, neither has a, a title right now. Maybe Cyclops is sleeping with Wolverine somehow, or maybe both of them are just giving it to Jean Grey. I, I don't know. Is it a throuple situation or what? But I mean, yeah. there's there's characters in there. But here's the thing that that kills me is that with all the hype over Pride. By the way, I'm distracted by the fact that there's an ad here for the Squirrel Girl, the Unbeatable Radio Show podcast. Oh, jeez! Did you know this existed? I've never heard of that. Okay. Well, at, at any rate, I, I they 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 make such a big deal out of this, and that and yet. It's they're stuck in the weird middle ground where they've got certainly like like several of the X Men comics. You've got uh, characters who are who are queer in the comic, but they're not they're not they're, they don't really get much to do. They just kind of stand around. And yeah. what 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 is that even worth? I mean, like Deadpool is what pansexual? Yeah, but I don't think do they even go into it that much? Like. Now, again, it's it's a whole thing. It's like, do you have to go into it if you have these characters? Like, like it's a like this is the problem with cynically trying to make a buck off of some of this stuff. Yeah, um, and that's not just a comics thing. I mean, you go into Target, Walmart, a lot of places sure. this month. You can get you know T-shirts, this and that, and and. 
and one of the other things about that too is it's not always all cynical. I mean, I know plenty of people who are like, oh, you know, I'm going to get one of these, you know, shirts or pins or something, and I'm going to wear it. You, you know, like we picked a day at work where we all, you know, wear it and so on. And you know, there's there's nice things that come out of that kind of stuff, but sure. but I think what makes this difficult is everything is different all the way you handle different characters and different backgrounds and different things is different so you don't the way people think about these things like it, it gets complicated it gets muddied like if you're having you know characters of different you know, ethnicities that, or, you know, sexes that just look different. You know, like, oh, that's a woman in this character, in, in this comic. Oh, this is someone of this background, that background. And you see it there. They don't have to actively do anything to get acknowledged as being that thing. It's like, oh, you did the, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, this character's in here. You, you know, you, you put John Stewart on the, um, on Justice League and Vixen and these guys. Okay better good but when it comes to queer characters th again it gets all weird and complicated because then it's like okay they're here but are are we using them that way or not is that something in the forefront how much of this has to be shown like it yeah it's yeah. a mess it's it's just a mess when you're doing this in fiction especially this kind of fiction for these audiences like it's just it's a lot and it's and it seems like we're just you know just sort of doing things to to pander for like a month and then move on just like um or for anything i mean there was that uh, non-binary character in that supergirl comic yep the one time i i don't think they've come back um uh alicia yao or is that uh, her name the um the Bat Batgirl. girl's roommate. But yeah, she, she, she um, showed up in an anthology book for, or she's showing up in Pride with a Batman Pride baseball bat. Yeah, but it's like so she's around occasionally, but she's barely used. They they keep creating these characters and then do nothing with them. Um, I, and I mean that that's not exclusive to just queer characters, but it does happen a lot to. To queer characters. Well, it, it just to me it it it, it does feel cynical, and I, I agree. There's certainly people who do things um, that are heartfelt and everything else. But you know, when you're getting a email from Delta Airlines being like, "Hey, to celebrate Pride Month, it's five percent off because we support Pride on certain domestic flights if booked before June fifteenth." Like, what what is the what is the Pride part there? You're just yeah. selling airline tickets, and then this article on Linda Carter. I, this is. As Pride Month officially kicks off, Linda Carter has spoken, Wonder Woman is an LGBTQ plus icon. And her quote is, I didn't write Wonder Woman, but if you want to argue that she is somehow not a queer or trans icon, then you're not paying attention. What? what yeah. But I, I guess I'm not paying attention because she, th there's no indication of this in the comics. Well, I think... You know, and, and having not, I uh, haven't talked to Linda Carter or anything, but sure, I sure. think what she's probably saying there, which is probably being taken out of context uh, by people, is that the character is an icon for those groups, just as, you know, like Judy Garland and Liza sure, Minnelli sure. is an icon. It's not talking about her being a queer character, it's talking about having that yeah, inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, but I, I don't. But then, if you're DC, what does it say that you you can't do Batwoman, an ongoing series? You have to kind of hint around with it. With Harley Quinn. I mean, put it this way: I get, it feels like nobody's getting what they want. So on one hand, you have comic people who are readers who are going, "Hey, they're just making everything gay," and lots of characters. You know, they're like, "Hey, we Alan Scott, he's gay now. We've revealed it. He's come out. He's he's." And you get these kind of tweets like, he's one of us now. Okay. And then they proceed to not publish any stories with Alan Scott for a year. So what, 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 what are we even doing now? I mean. Well, until the next time they 
dig up Alan Scott so that way they can have another comic where he's sitting down with someone and he's talking about how hard it was to yeah. be gay all those years. Because they've done that multiple times at this point. Yes. There's they've been multiple of those stories. And it's like, hey, go for it or don't. You know, just but yeah. pick at some point. Yeah. Like, no, absolutely. But I just, I it, it the thing that strikes me is that, you know, it's Pride Month, so we're going to see a lot of videos from a lot of channels talking about the gayification of comics. Yeah. And they certainly are, are you know, introducing or changing characters mm-hmm. to be LGBTQ. But... Mm-hmm. They then proceed to not publish any of those comics. They'll they'll show up right. once. There will be a round of applause, and then they disappear. Meanwhile, you know, one side will continue to complain about everything's gay, and the other side will continue to say, "Hey, we've done this, but we're not actually going to publish anything ever again." And so, you know, we'll see you next year. So what? Yeah. What? What are we even doing at that point? No, for sure. Um... You know, a couple of other things I'll, I'll add to other comics to check out is uh, Killer Queens uh, from uh, David Boer through okay. uh, Dark Horse. Right. Uh, he's the Canto guy. I haven't read that. Um, I've heard good things yeah. about that, though. He, that's a Canto creator, yeah. Yeah, the writer of Canto, at least. But yeah, the Killer Queens, that, that was fine. It was a fun, cute, uh, you know, queer sort of space comic thing. That was fun. And um, I really liked On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. Uh, Tilly has done other great work. She's worth checking out. She's like a, I think multi Eisner award winning, uh, writer artist. Um, I think you can still read on a sunbeam for free on online. Uh, cause it was like a web comic that was, uh, eventually printed, but, uh, she's great. I got to sit with her at the Eisner's that one year and, uh, nice. in 2018. That was, that was fun. Um, good networking. Yeah. 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 No, but, but, and yeah, but Tilly, Tilly's phenomenal, but, but yeah, and obviously there's also just a glut of of manga. Like if if you can't get enough gay stuff, um, you you should be a manga fan because there's there's so much gay stuff. There, no, absolutely, it's a it's an yeah. entire massive genre that really uh, completely overshadows anything going on in the U.S. But I just I just I, I don't know. I'm hung up on this this idea that. Every it feels like everybody rolls out the pride decorations, mm-hmm. and then you know come and including this Iceman comic four issues yeah. out every week, mm-hmm. and then come July first, fuck him. Not 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 yeah. you know. no no but uh but yeah I mean it is it is uh, uh, you know it's it's upsetting but but also. You are going to get this on a lot of YouTube channels. You're going to get a lot of them talking about how they're you know, ramming all this gay stuff down our throats and this and that. And it's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not like, it's really not that. I mean, sure. If you're just on Twitter or you're just in certain places and you're following certain people, or you're looking at certain articles and this and that, I mean, you're going to get a lot of that coverage on sites and things like that, because that's what they think at least gets clicks. Yeah, and so you get that, but you end up getting. I, I think all of this has led to people being hyper aware of these things and not realizing how little of it there there still is relatively to everything else. Yeah, it, it's it is weird because the like I, we've talked about this before. The hype for DC's Pride issue was all over Twitter. The official channel, the people involved were hyping, 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 but. It's it. It really is a blink and you miss it kind of comic, and then nothing, nothing continues into the next month. But you're right; there will be dozens and dozens and dozens of, of, of channels and shows talking about, you know, how much gay there is in comics. But it's like yeah. that people are talking about a lot of gay things in comics, but there's actually very other than than random appearances in comics. But, but what's weird is they're not doing classic action either. They're just like I, I don't even I don't even know what's going on in most of these books. But no, but for for sure, you would think that we could list more than four ongoing titles from the big two that feature a, a gay character. Yeah, like prominently, you, you know, prominently. And, and that that that's like part of the the story. Like um, kind of piggybacking on that. Um, 
uh, was it one of the questions you answered uh, like probably a month mm -hmm. or two ago with the, I think the one woman who was like, I just kind of want a, a comic that's like Spider-Man. Yeah. But it's, you know, a, a lesbian or something like that. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, just, and yeah, there is stuff like that out there in, in the indie scene. Right. Uh, or the manga scene, as you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Manga scene and, and, and stuff like that. But, but yeah, it's not something that's really happening at the big two. And for all of the, the yelling and, and screaming that, that certain corners of, of YouTube have, have done where it, you know, there's no characters really come out as trans. There's no trans ongoing comic. Like there's no, none of that. Um, they're, they're making now, um, what was it? The, the actress who played the, the trans character in, in Super Bowl is, uh, writing or co-writing a graphic novel. And I think, um, uh, it was Rye Hickman who, who I've worked with before and I love Rye. Um, but is, not for one of the big two. Well, that's going to be a big two comic, but not a comic. It's going to be one of the YA graphic novels. That's going to be yeah, off sure. its own thing. So yeah. I, again, I, I, you know, and I know there's a lot of people listening who are just going to hate, or hate this take completely hate the take. And I, okay, that's fine. But in all seriousness, it feels very cowardly. Because it's like, hey, we're going to have a character featured in two panels of the Pride anthology book that is kind of out in continuity, has no storyline impact. It's not a tie into Dark Crisis or anything that matters to the rest of the line. And it's going to sit here over on the side and we're going to hype it and then it's going to be completely forgotten about 30 days later. But we're going to take this one panel featuring a trans character. We're going to put it on our, our Twitter thing. We're going to hype it up continuously. A bunch of people are going to bitch about it, but we're definitely not going to give that character any other meaningful appearances or a regular spot in a book or an, uh, nothing like that. We're just going to kind of perform like this matters to us and everybody's going to get really worked up and pissed about it. And we're going to get pissed at the people who get pissed. But when all is said and done, we're just going to keep doing the things we've done for a while because God help us. If like we bring back Batwoman as a book. Sure. No, exactly. And, and this is the movies and TV shows too. It's all of that. I mean, we can, we can go on and on about like, um, how like, um, the, the brave, uh, queer representation in, uh, Avengers Endgame with guy who talks about husband who packs lunch or dinner or whatever <laughs> yeah. in the one scene, like all these scenes, like, um, the, the the bold uh, background two girls kissing in Rise of Skywalker that could easily be edited out, um, like those those sort of sort of things, and it's hard to see that and, and for it to not make people cynical. But it's like like you were saying, it's like there's there are people in news outlets that won't shut up about three seconds of a movie. And then on the other side, there's people where it's like, you're letting three seconds of a movie, like apparently ruin your entire month based on your video output or your Twitter presence. And it's well, like, yeah. you're not any better than, you know? It's, no, it's just, but it's, it's, it feels like just a cynical game on, on sure. all fronts. You know, the, the three seconds of two women kissing briefly in the Star Wars movie is going to be the worst thing we've ever seen. And meanwhile, over at Disney, you're going to pat yourself on the back like, we are LGBT clue inclusive because one two thousandth of our film featured a brief scene of two completely unimportant characters kissing for a second that we edited out in several markets where they don't like that kind of thing. Yeah. We're an ally. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's weird because you get that and then you also get like there, there's a, a decent amount of people still in, in 2022 that that do have that like weird. It's like you feel like you're taking a time machine back into the 90s, like when, mm -hmm. you, you know, and I'm not saying that the 90s is some horrible hellscape or anything like that. Just hear me out. Uh, ju I'm just talking specifically in how people talk about, you know, gay characters or gay scenes or anything like that, where, sure. you know, you'll you'll be talking to grown men. Who who are just like um, like oh, I hate that they, they gotta get all the gay stuff out and this and that and it's like I know it's not 
the major- it's not everyone, but it's a decent amount of people who who don't quite realize maybe how offensive they might sound when <laughs> well, it's when they're just like you know like I just don't want there to be any gay stuff in this thing. Like, I mean, if you look down to grab your beer and you look back up to the TV, you'll miss that Star Wars scene. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just it, it the 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 joke to me is that. Again, nobody is getting what they want. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I guess we have an Iceman series. The thing, you know, congratulations. Iceman finally gets a comic over on Marvel Unlimited, and I'm sure that will be great. And then, uh, you know, he's exploring his Omega Mutant powers just in time for him to explore them again in 2024 when finally. he needs to explore them. So I, I, it, it's it's hard not to feel extremely cynical about this stuff. And I keep coming back to, I mentioned to you, Batwoman sold well yeah. back during the New 52. It sold in what would be considered the top 25% of comics yeah. today. And so if you're DC and you're pumping out 30-odd Batman books a month and you consider yourself a very progressive company that is an ally to LGBTQ people, um, you know what would be a pretty good ally would be bringing that book back you you got every other Batman book you could possibly vomit out. Maybe you could actually go through with her getting married. I mean, you know, could be an idea. Yeah. Um, the Renee Montoya question. Uh, Renee Montoya is pretty popular for a, a side character in Batman who's not part of the Bat family. It's like, why, why not bring her back and do stuff with her? It's I mean, like, we're getting an Ace the Bat Hound book. I, I'm just saying, like, at some point, can you really call yourself a progressive company supporting pride when you're putting out a uh, Batman's dog book, but yeah. you're not doing anything with that one? Yeah, you know, or um, or explore the um, the queer nature of uh, Supergirl and Comet's relationship. <laughs> now, now, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, <laughs> they're not oh, well. the same species, but anyway. no, no, they're, no, they're not. So hey, it's, it's not it's, bestiality. Uh, yeah. if, uh, if you're a Kryptonian, it's not bestiality. No, exactly. But, um, but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, there's all, all sorts of crazy things with that. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of those characters. I mean, um, Pied Piper is a character that uh, Bill Loeb's expertly wrote that coming out story. Um, to the point that got him the first Glad Award for comics. Mm -hmm. Where's the what's Pi Piper doing? What's what's Bill Loeb's doing? Yeah, I mean you you think uh, being one of the first winners of that award, you might want to call him up to do like a story in your anthology, considering he broke ground in the '90s. Yeah, or was that the '80s? That was er I think that was early '90s because that was issue fifty three. So I want to say by the time, yeah, I, I think that's early nineties, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, um, I don't get it. I just don't get it. So no, yeah, it's uh, but at least every once in a while, uh, Captain America at a party will ask where North star's husband is. That's progress. It is. Yeah. That's the kind of progress we need in Congress. Well, Joe, Thank you very much for talking through this with me. I know it's a touchy subject for some, and uh, it's weird. I, I just, again, I, I, to me, it's like, you know, I, I do it or don't. But, but this, this yeah. in between nothing, and I do really get irked at this this battle that's been going. On. I mean, how long has the, has the, uh, the YouTube battle against the gays in comics been going? It's like it's been month or sorry, months, years that we've been doing this, and the longest running ongoing featuring a gay character is Superboy, which is on issue nine now. Might be 10 or 11, but yeah, no, that that's going. And then, um, you know, technically it might be Catwoman if we're going in, in, in that direction. But, um, yeah, no, I think, yeah, but, but again, it, it's a much smaller number than people act like it is. So you get this weird shouting over each other thing of people who 
are convinced because of coverage and things like that, that somehow every comic is, is queer now, um, yelling on one side and then the other side, it's also kind of like, well, it's not really. I mean, you keep pointing to examples of books that happened, but they're not actively happening now, you know, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All I, all I know is that Batwoman for the first 10 issues sold pretty well, sold in the, uh, the, the 60,000s. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know, 50 to 60,000s. It kind of went, it went up and down and I'm sure there was some shenanigans going on with overships and everything else. But, you know, again, you, you, it just seems like there would be a better answer here. Batwoman number oh, yeah, one, no, DC sure. launched at 72,000 copies. That That's really good. Yeah. Featuring a, a gay character back in the uh, age-old year of uh, September 2011. Yeah. No. But, um, but yeah, you have that. Um, and, and then even in some of these X-books, it's like, what are we doing with? Richter and Chatterstar. Like, it's like, that's a mess. Sure. It's, it's just a mess for no reason. And it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. It's like, it's just a weird, it's weird how it's spinning its wheels. And it's just kind of like, oh, they used to be in a relationship, and now they're not. And now they're kind of friends. And now they're doing the end. But we're not really seeing Richter and Chatterstar do cool things. No. And I mean, other another gay couple, which they went to the big deal of, of uh, having them get married, um, Hulkling and Witkin, pretty much in comics only show up when there's some kind of space themed event and they need to like trot out, be like, oh, this guy is in charge of the scrolls or something. I don't know. Let's let's. Hey, you remember that they're married and uh, they could do some. And then they, they promptly disappear. again. Yeah. And uh, I genuinely really like. Wicked and Hulk playing. I, I really like the Young Avengers books that have come out. Uh, I, I I think they're very good characters. I, I think they're pretty well thought out. I, I think they have they're they're powerful characters without being like overpowered. Like it's it's good. It it, it all fits pretty well. So I, I really <laughs> like them, and they don't get used nearly enough. Yeah, I, I and fairly popular. I mean, yeah. I, I think I weirdly a lot less popular now. Like yeah. I think they were a lot more popular like four or five years ago, but the complete lack of use. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, it's all strange to me. It. Happy Pride Month. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. I I don't know. I'm I have be a, here all month. I have <laughs> that's that's good. <laughs> I've got an email here from Swiss Airlines saying that uh, you could get an official uh, lapel pin. If you fly business, so Ooh. yeah, that that's a that's a deal. It would be nice to make it official, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, well, Joe, thank you very much, and uh, have a great month. Thank you.